good housekeeping practices are all about keeping things clean and tidy to prevent attracting pests to the premises in the first place. Keeping waste in bins with tightly fitted lids. Keeping food in pest proof containers. And if you look at the example on the slide of the food premises, there's a, a solid pavement right round the periphery of the business itself. Again, it's like keeping a bin on an impervious base. Where that tarmac or that concrete base runs around the side of the business, pests don't like crossing that barrier. If you had vegetation coming right up to the building, then obviously you would have somewhere for pests to hide. So, how can we prevent access of pests? Well, first of all, by keeping doors and windows closed. But the other thing you need to look out for, look around the framework of the doors and windows to make sure they're in good repair. There's no cracks or holes that pests can gain access through. If you need to open windows for ventilation purposes, then make sure that there are fly screens fitted. Check around holes in pipe work. Check bottoms of doors. You can get brush strips or rubber strips that can fit under the bottom of doors to stop any pests, any insects from getting through. You can also get some metal strips to fit under the bottom of doors so that pests or rodents don't gnaw through. There are four things you must do as a food handler if you identify the signs of pests on premises. The first and the most important thing to do is to inform your manager or line supervisor, dispose of contaminated food, protect other food that hasn't been contaminated, and contact pest control. So how do we eradicate pests? How do we get rid of them? Normally we leave it up to the pest control contractor, but there are two main ways that we can eradicate pests. The first way and the most preferred ways is by the use of physical methods. In other words, the use of ultraviolet electronic fly killers or EFKs, traps, sticky fly papers or mist netting for birds. The lesser preferred method is the use of chemicals, either odenticides or insecticides. Uh, for two main reasons. If you're a small business and you're laying down your own poisons to kill any pests, then that poison could end up as a physical or chemical contaminant in the food that you're preparing. And also, if you put down any rodenticides, and uh, the rodenticides that are, has a chronic effect on the rodents themselves, in other words, they take quite a few doses before it actually kills the rodents, then if you're administering a poison when the rodent itself is pregnant, then it could give birth to young rodents which will then have an immunity to the chemical that they've used. Let's have a look at some examples of pests. The top left hand picture is a brown rat or Rattus norvegicus, the most common rat in the UK. At the last count, and I don't know who actually counted them, but there's supposed to be about 75 million brown rats in existence in the UK. Now, the, they are a problem because of where they live. They tend to live in insanitary conditions like sewers, amongst feces, amongst disease. So they carry a lot of harmful bacteria in their drop-ins, in their urine, on their fur, in their ears, in their nose, in their mouth, etc. They carry all the major pathogens, plus Viles disease or leptospirosis, which it carries in its urine and is quite deadly. The middle picture is the black rat, uh, not so common in urban and rural areas. You tend to see this rat in seaports and by ships, etc. The bottom picture is that of a cockroach, and that is a German cockroach. You've got a German cockroach and an oriental cockroach, and they harbour a lot of disease and bacteria on their feet, on their shell casing, in their droppings. They're very gregarious nocturnal, they're also carnivorous and one of their favourite food items is rat droppings. You can imagine the bacteria already in rat droppings before they ingest that material. The top picture there we've got a feral pigeon, wild pigeon, 
they contain a lot of bacteria, especially Campylobacter, and the various types of viral diseases such as the Norbrook virus. Their faeces is very acidic and it tends to destroy stone buildings, especially in cities like cathedrals and churches, etc. They've got a lot of dust mites in their feathers as well. And the other thing with birds, if you ever go for a holiday to a seaside resort where there's a large seagull population, you could well come back feeling quite ill. What happens there is the same with pigeons, say, in Trafalgar Square, where there's a large bird population, there's a lot of faeces, a lot of birds' faeces, which actually dries up and becomes part of the environmental dust, which you inhale, and as I say, you can come quite ill uh, from effects of that. Then we've got the fly. might look harmless enough, but they carry up to 150 different types of bacteria, mostly pathogens, in their intestines. And their method of living and eating is a lot to be desired. Flies can't eat solid food. So what they need to do is to liquefy the food. So I'll give you a scenario. A fly, they like living in unsanitary conditions, so they might be living amongst dogs' feces, and they're quite happy to live on dogs' feces and trample around in that and get a lot of bacteria on their feet and their wings and their body. They might fly through an open window, land on some food that's been prepared. Now, as I say, they can't eat solid food, so they need to liquefy it, and they do this by vomiting onto the food tamping the vomit into the food and then sucking the food back up in through his proboscis. And once they've ingested that liquefied soup, they'll tamp in a few bacteria for good measures. They might have a shit on it itself for good measure, fly through the window, then it's your turn. The bottom left hand side we've got fly maggots and the right hand side that's a grain weevil. Now you will find grain weevils in ordinary domestic flour. Now, domestic flour, going back about 10 to 15 years ago, the process of making flour was the grain is brought from the field, it's milled, it's filtered, and then it used to have a blast of chlorine gas put through it to kill all bacteria and eggs and to make it whiter than it should have been because it's got a bit of a yellow tinge when it's quite natural. They don't use that last stage of chlorination anymore in flour. Because again, it was adding another chemical to a food product. So, as a test, if you buy any domestic flour and leave it in a warm room for a few days and check the inside, after those few days, you will see little grain weevils crawling through the flour. There's a few more examples of pictures in food premises. The top left hand side, that's a fly screen that's fitted on the outside of some openable louvre windows. Now these can be also fitted on the inside of windows. Right hand side top photo, that's a kick plate on the bottom of a door to prevent any rodents from gnawing through on the wood. Bottom left hand side, that's a goods entrance where there's a secondary plastic set of doors which you can actually walk through or drive a forklift truck through and they'll automatically close behind you. Now the next picture is an interesting one. That black stain to the left hand side of the picture is a rat smear. This is because a rat has got a very high oil or fat content in its fur and skin. And if you've got a rat infestation problem, you'll see this where they brush against the wall. And that mark itself is full of bacteria and pathogens. So it's a rat smear.